views expressed in the videos are my observation, analysis of events, persons based on principles of astrology. It's not my intent to predict, forecast absolute outcomes, only suggest how they may unfold. Nothing is set in stone. I could be wrong, but often I'm right. My desire is not to promote fear, only inform about what we see unfolding. It is our wish to prepare our subscribers for events that could affect them, their family, their goals, and their future, to help to prepare for what you may already feel suspect is happening, and to send a warning shot across the bow and raise a flag of concern. Our goal is to help, not hinder, in these perilous times, to inspire and offer possible direction, and to reveal that a greater plan and purpose are behind all that is happening. Eventually, we will see a brighter day. If you would like to show your appreciation for our work on these videos or this channel, and also the Knowing Whispers channel, you can always click on the word thanks at the bottom of all the videos. Hello everybody, it's Robert Cosmar, the Astrology of Life YouTube channel, the Knowing Whispers YouTube channel, and the Astrology Network on YouTube. Today I am going to be doing a video that I promised about two weeks ago about the extraordinary good fortune and the luck of Donald Trump. And I'm going to be using his Hindu horoscope to describe, to point out, to explain from a karmic perspective why it is that Donald Trump is able to get away with the things that he is able to get away with. And again, for those of you that are not versed in Hindu or Vedic astrology and not open to the idea of karma, fate, and destiny, uh, this can be difficult to be able to, you know, comprehend. But I ask you to be patient and to follow me along the process here. I won't go uh, deeply in depth to try to explain to you the process of a Vedic horoscope, but I'll be pointing some things out that are obvious to me and to those of you that understand uh, Hindu astrology, uh, the significance of his chart in terms of what we know and what we see about his life. Okay. And again, going back to the, the thought I mentioned here a little bit ago about karma, fate, and destiny. I know that most people don't see life that way. And that's probably why in the West, Westerners kind of shy away for the most part in Hindu astrology. They don't want to deal with that particular perspective on life. But I encourage you in your uh, spiritual search, if you're into astrology, that you take some time and you take a look at Hindu astrology. It's going to open up a whole different world and a whole different perspective about astrology and about life. And it may answer some questions for you that you have been wanting to know your entire life. Um, and of course, in any situation in, in learning, there are periods and stuff where um, you go through, you know, self-doubt, you go through periods of, of questioning, you uh, and you're investigating yourself astrologically, there are times when you feel pain because you realize some things that up until that point in time you haven't investigated or you haven't looked at. The true purpose of astrology is to help you to evolve, to help you to understand your karma in terms of the Hindu version of astrology, and in the Western astrology is to help you to understand the uh, psychological and spiritual growth that is manifested in the events that you have happened to you in your life. Okay, now, what is it about Donald Trump's horoscope that makes it so exceptional? And it really is an exceptional horoscope, okay? Even though, you know, uh, like you, I do not have any great deal of affection for Donald Trump. I think he's extremely abrasive. And this is seen right here. In his Vedic Hindu horoscope, Mars is really tightly conjunct his ascendant. And of course, in Hindu astrology, the ascendant and the moon are the two most important um, placements in the horoscope. All right. 
this type of situation here with Mars being at almost four degrees of Leo and the ascendant about seven degrees Leo indicates that you're going to have a person who is extremely egotistical, narcissistic, aggressive, rude, foul, okay? Um, again, if you don't know that much about Hindu, it may be kind of hard to wrap your brain around that, but if you do, you understand how significant this is in revealing a type of individual that we see, okay? Now, <clears throat> over here in the second house, the house of wealth, the house of family matters, uh, the house of knowledge, okay? He has Jupiter retrograde, stationary direct in that house, which is an extremely rare, okay, place for Jupiter to be uh, in anybody's horoscope, okay? In uh, Hindu astrology, Retrogrades are very powerful, but when you're talking about stationary retrograde, where the planet has almost slowed down to a stop and it's beginning to move in a direct motion or going into a retrograde motion, all right, you're talking about a highly unusual, extremely unusual, extremely powerful um, placement of Jupiter. Okay, that in itself is a very strong indicator of why Donald Trump has been able to amass wealth. Uh, in some ways, why he was born into a family that wealth was the foundation upon which he entered in. All right, now, it's not just the fact that that is a stationary direct placement of Jupiter in the house of wealth, okay? But when you take into consideration the aspects that this particular planet throws, and it throws aspects to the fifth the seventh and the ninth house. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine. Okay? Five, seven, and nine. The uh, aspects in Hindu astrology are different than the ones that you probably have uh, learned if you're studying Western astrology. But here's the thing that you have to understand. This is such a rare thing you know, and I was, I knew that it was stationary. I didn't know how close, but when I looked up in the ephemeris, that Jupiter goes literally stationary direct, okay, on that day. So it is almost slowed down to no movement at all, all right? And that makes it, in Hindu astrology, extremely extraordinarily powerful. And it throws energy in the aspects. So we have the first, or I'm sorry, from this particular house, the second house, we go one, two, three, four, and five. Now, here's where it gets to be interesting because everybody is wondering about Donald Trump's health. You know, he has bad eating habits, you know. They wonder and they worry about whether or not he's going to be prosecuted. Okay? This that I'm going to show you right here is an indication of why he has managed to stay above the law. It doesn't mean that he could not be prosecuted, but it does say something about his ability to evade. All right? And there's another aspect here that we'll talk about a little bit, okay, because it also shows his extreme wealth, okay. Um, going back to the sixth house, this is the house of enemies, it's the house of litigation, okay, it's the house of health. And again, I'm going to reference back to this very powerful Jupiter here, okay. Uh, this Jupiter in his horoscope, in some way, shape, or form, is like a, a, uh, a get-home-free card in certain areas of his life. Obviously, one of them has to do with wealth, okay? Now, <clears throat> all planets in Hindu astrology aspect the house that is directly opposite their placement. So, Jupiter also is throwing an aspect to the eighth house in his Hindu chart. This is the house 
of essentially unearned income. You know, it's not only just taxes and insurance and things like that, but it's uh, money that you attract, money that is um, given to you through donations and stuff. You wonder why it is that Donald Trump seems to get uh, large amounts of money donated to him when he behaves and acts the way that he does, when people know the way that he is, all right? Well, this is the reason, and the reason is not just because of the fact that Jupiter aspects that eighth house, but it aspects the house that ru it rules that sign. Pisces is the sign on his eighth house, all right? Jupiter, again, is enormously strong, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's throwing that aspect straight across into that eighth house. So again, this is a, a indication of an individual that by all, you know, all considerations um, would have enormous wealth, you know. There are other aspects that affect, okay, that affect um, his chart too and that mitigate that somewhat, but you can't overestimate how powerful that Jupiter is, okay. One of the things that also reveals itself in the sense of what he has had to go through, loss of money, uh, situations where he's been sued by you name it, everybody on the planet, okay? Saturn up here, <clears throat> which is in the sign of its detriment, cancer, okay? It aspects the house that is directly opposite it, okay? But it also aspects the third, the seventh, and the tenth. And lo and behold, one, two, three, okay? So in other words, for all the wealth that Donald Trump has amassed and can amass, which is enormous, okay? He obviously has a problem with excess which is one of the things about Saturn being in, okay, the, um, the 12th house, because the 12th house does have to do with extremes to a certain extent, excess, losses, you know, due to that type of behavior and stuff. And, of course, Donald Trump doesn't care about money because he's learned over time that if he gets it taken away here, he's going to pull it in here, okay? That is a power that has been given to Donald Trump as a tool of the universe at this particular time to bring about the karmic changes that we see going on in the world. Okay, now, you might say, well, if this Saturn opposes the 10th house of health and enemies, okay, doesn't that mean that Donald Trump could or would be possibly incarcerated? Saturn's in the 12th house, okay? You could say that, and you could possibly, you know, bring about some, you know, indications of that potential. However, looky here. Saturn, okay, which aspects the third, the seventh, and the tenth house. Also, this is the seventh house, and the seventh, or I'm sorry, the sixth house, and the sixth house is Capricorn. The sign that Saturn rules. And again, the way that Hindu astrology works is that you have to be able to blend all of these little things, these important things. Is the planet close to being exalted? Is it in its own sign? Is it a malefic planet? Is it a benefic planet? Okay. All of these things are what the Hindu astrologer considers when they are trying to describe what is happening and what is the likelihood or the severity of what is happening or how great is it what is happening okay <clears throat> excuse me and again all of this okay all of this is reflecting the reality of what we see okay and for those of you that doubt karma fate and destiny I'll leave it up to you to decide for yourself about that but if you take and learn a little bit about Hindu astrology and you compare it to your Western horoscope, you're going to find out some amazing things that you probably wondered about and suspected, okay? 
but now you have concrete evidence astrologically that this is okay a part of um, something that goes beyond chance okay we are in the world very limited by our beliefs and by our um, attitudes and our understanding of life we're kind of in some ways egotistically proud that we think that our views and our beliefs are the only possible view and belief of life that there is but if you give yourself the chance to open up and to study not only these two different systems of astrology but more importantly study your own inner life know thyself okay and then relate those experiences to what you see here you're going to broaden your understanding of the nature of reality and it's kind of going to explode like an atomic bomb and you're going to realize that life is not so simple as you were led to believe that it is quite profoundly deep and that there is an order to it okay but even in that order so to speak which is kind of what astrology is is a way of ordering the evolution of karma okay uh, it's not the whole truth okay life is far more complex than even just Hindu and Western astrology okay so again uh, when you wonder when you scratch your head and you ask yourself the question how is it possible that Donald Trump could be where he is knowing obviously the way that he is and the way that he behaves towards women towards other people in general that he has an enormously pumped up ego <clears throat> enormous ego that like Putin he is extravagant beyond any possible description of extravagance okay it's because of the fact that this is the cards that he was dealt when he was born this is the function that he is meant to provide for humanity uh, at this time and uh, as I mentioned in a couple videos ago I think uh, there's very strong indicators that we could see him back in the presidency in 2024 all right you'll notice over here uh, this is the DASA system which is similar to the progressions in Western astrology he's been in his Jupiter DASA for quite some time and again knowing how powerful and strong this Jupiter is this perfectly explains why he in a sense although this Saturn is driving him a little bit crazy losing the election and other things he essentially is untouchable and sometimes I feel with Donald Trump that he knows he's untouchable okay uh, he may also be aware of the fact that he's got a certain period of time to accomplish all the things that he wants to do but as hard as it is for most people to understand uh, and I'll use the example of serial killers or other people like Hitler and like Stalin and stuff there are people who do not possess the empathy the compassion and the selflessness that other people possess and they are only driven by an out-of-control ego that craves more that's the thing to understand about the ego the problem is not that the ego is bad the problem is that the ego uh, is insatiable in terms of its desire and once you accomplish one thing it wants more and it wants more and it wants more and this is why you see Donald Trump's behavior as it escalated through his presidency um, you know revenge and that type of thing okay well I hope this gives you some more perspective on Donald Trump and explains a little bit more about his karmic indicators and how that's going to impact and affect us and uh, for those of you that joined me Saturday from 10 to 11 in the morning for our monthly astrology of life live stream I want to thank you for being there it was a pleasure to share with you the differences between Western and Hindu astrology and again we do that once a month on the first Saturday of every month we have a live stream we talk about world events and astrology and things of that nature okay 
Our next live stream will be the third Sunday of the month. Okay, and that's the Knowing Whispers live stream channel where we talk about ways in which you can help yourself in these times to be able to um, recognize what it is that you need to do to feel more secure within yourself and to have more to gain more self-knowledge uh, and to fulfill your purpose in this world okay from the love of my life cj my spiritual partner and from our super dog toby i want to thank you those of you that are subscribers those of you that have become members those of you that are donators on a monthly basis all of you are appreciated and we look forward to being of service to you in these very troubling times. Thank you again.